I'm Betsy Kaufman, and I am a Senior Program Manager with Energy Trust of Oregon. I'm Leslie with GEA, and I'm here with Betsy today. Betsy, um, how you've had kind of an interesting, not traditional as you put it, approach to coming to the GEA Thermal Energy Industry. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, I am not an engineer. Uh, I don't have technical training. I actually come from a communications background. And I started doing this work in the renewable power field more generically uh, by uh, working at a salmon organization. This was in Oregon, and I worked for an organization that was working to recover salmon runs. And we started a salmon-friendly power program uh, to give people the opportunity to buy power that was not produced by big dams and not produced by fossil fuels. And I was doing the communications for that program and learned a lot about it and had to learn a great deal about renewable power and eventually the person who was running the program left and I was the only one who knew anything about it so I took over the program and, and I just fell in love with the renewable power field. It's always been something I've been interested in, I've been interested in environmental issues so it was a natural transition but it's not the way that people usually end up here. And since that time, how has kind of your view of the industry, your view of renewables changed and what are some of the changes that you've seen? The biggest change that I've seen is, I, I've seen this in an extreme form in the uh, solar world, but I've seen it kind of all over the renewable industry, is it's changed from being the Birkenstock Granola Group to the suits. Uh, the money has arrived in the industry in the last 10 years. Um, we are seeing more attention uh, at the federal level, um, but mostly we're seeing the investors take this really seriously, and that's the biggest change. Uh, it's also changed in that it seems like you need more qualifications to get into this industry than you did uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago. That's the other other big shift. And you work, uh, you work in finances with, with geothermal energy. Um, and which is something that uh, money kind of tends to be a showstopper at times. Um, is it just kind of the nature of the beast, or do you feel like that's something that, that we're overcoming? Um, ultimately, renewable energy projects have to make money. If they're not making money, they're not going to work. So at some point, somebody has to get involved uh, who's going to bring money to the equation, and the people who are involved in this industry have to have some understanding of the financial aspect of it. Um, all of these projects have to sell their power to somebody uh, and they all have to pencil. And so um, I don't think that uh, we're ever going to get past the idea that money has to be involved in some way. I think we probably could get to a point where um, the subsidies for these projects or the incentives for them are on a level playing field with the um, uh, with the fossil fuel industry, uh, and that might make things a little bit easier. Um, but at this point, you know, it's it's ultimately it's an economic equation. Okay, so. um, now, what is it like to be a woman in the geothermal industry? <laughs> well, my. My standing joke is I went to a WIN conference once and there was somebody I needed to find and I didn't know what he looked like and someone said, well, he's a tall guy with gray hair and I looked out at the room of people and there were dozens and dozens and dozens of tall men with gray hair and I thought it would have been much easier to have found this person if you were a woman. Uh, there definitely are fewer women. It, it's, it is interesting. I've never felt like people don't respect me, but it's definitely... Um, the more unusual career path. Uh, personally, I think we do really well at it because besides the finances being important, um, all of these projects have problems that need to be solved and they all have relationships that need to be built. And I think women are very good at both of those things. And those are the two things that I personally really bring to the table in the work that I do. And, and so I, I have never found being a woman to hold me back, but you definitely notice it when you go to any renewable energy event that, you know, I'm always one of the few women in the room. And just in closing, is there anything that you would, advice you would give, anything you'd say to students and people who are just looking into getting, looking into, getting into the geothermal industry? Yes, I think that good problem solving skills and creativity and good communication skills are as important as technical skills. 
So I think that if you're uh, coming at this from the standpoint, you know, that, uh, or from the, the angle of being an engineer or having, you know, technical background, um, make sure to find, uh, you know, find a way to get some of those other skills as well. Um, I also think it's a field that um, practical experience is very helpful. Any student who can uh, get him or herself an internship or some volunteer work, I think, is going to be very helpful. And again, because these projects all have to pencil economically, um, the more you understand about money, I think the easier it's going to be to work in this business. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Oh, Betsy. you're welcome. I think this is a, a great thing to do. We, um, and we love talking to students, so.